Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Richard Halliday. Richard was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and this one's his shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of a neat new drone, the Potensic Atom SE. What is a Potensic Atom SE? Well, first off, we can see that, yeah, it's another one of these little portable drones, a little folding portable, portable drones. It does come with a really nice carrying case for the drone and its accessories. It includes a uh, strap too, by the way, shoulder strap for the carrying case. Uh, but let's go over this thing. Very small, okay, uh, and very lightweight. This only weighs 244 grams with the battery. What does that mean? That means this does not require registration in most countries with the exception of those countries that require registration of a camera drone. This is a camera drone, okay? So keep that in mind. This will require registration in some countries like Canada that require camera drones to be registered. It is a GPS drone. It means it automatically returned to home on command, on loss of signal, or on LVC. It does include a capability of um, optical flow. That's that little sensor right there. What's optical flow mean? That means this will automatically maintain its place indoors. If you want to fly indoors, uh, by this camera, little camera looking down at the ground and maintaining its position using that camera. Okay. One other thing this has, which is kind of unusual, in that it has time of flight sensors, TOF sensors. That's these two things here. One is your emitter, infrared emitter here, and one is the uh, receiver right here. What these two little sensors do is look at the ground. Actually, it, it bounces a infrared light signal off the ground and it uh, calculates the time of that light signal to be transmitted and then received. And you divide uh, that by two along with the speed of light and it measures the distance from the drone to the ground. What's that mean? That means in, in addition to the barometric altitude hold that's inside here, you have this optical altitude holds, which should help maintain a very steady altitude, particularly indoor flying, I believe, is the idea of that um, um, time of flight sensor coming into play. Um, it is powered by a 7.4 volt, let me pull it out, 2500 milliampere hour lithium ion battery. This is in the LiPo, this is lithium ion. But this is supposed to give this drone 31 minutes of flight time. Um, it do, does come with uh, actually two. I believe um, they, it's standard with two. I'm not sure, folks. You're going to have to check if you have to, have to buy extra batteries uh, separately. But mine came with two batteries. Okay. Uh, other things about it. Let's talk about that camera. This is a one-third uh, yeah, one inch, 13 megapixel CMOS sensor camera. It produces videos at 4K, that's 3840 by 2160 pixels at 30 frames per second. It also is capable of taking photos with resolution of 4608 by 2592 pixels. Now this video and photos are recorded to an onboard SD card, and I'm looking for that SD card right now. Oh, there it is in the back. <laughs> There's a little SD card slide in the back right beneath the battery. Uh, so this is capable of recording directly to an SD card. Okay, a lot of these uh, under 250 grand drones that we've seen recently have only been able to record to your phone via Wi-Fi. And I want to talk about Wi-Fi here shortly. But let's stay focused on uh, the camera right now. Um, let's talk about the camera mount. The camera mount itself has dampers. This is not a, a two-axis gimbal or three-axis gimbal. It's no axis. Well, it's one axis up and down <laughs> gimbal, uh, but it has some stabilization. Um, see, that, see that bouncing around? That helps reduce the vibrations from the propellers to pr produce a more steady um, video, hopefully uh, eliminating um, jello effect on your video. But uh, that video is also stabilized through electronic image stabilization. This has an onboard processor on, on the drone itself, inside the drone itself, that takes that video and automatically stabilizes it using electronic processing. What does that mean? That means we don't have, we're not dependent on three axis gimbal or two axis gimbal with mechanical features. There's no moving parts other than the up down control on this so that uh, you know less likely to have Mechanical failure, failure also uh, improves um, power management to the drone. You know, uh, those gimbals do suck up a lot of power from your batteries normally, so that gives us you know additional flight time in that we don't have to um, take care of the power requirements of the gyros on those uh, multi-axis gimbals. So that's an advantage of this little uh, flyer right there. 
Okay, so that's the drone itself. Okay, it's um, got an on-off switch here. You activate by a quick press and then a long press to turn it on and off. Um, I talked about the battery. Here's how you remove it. Make sure when you insert this battery that that clicks all the way in and comes down. You don't want this popping up. Now let's talk about the battery. I, I did mention the battery being uh, uh, two. What is it? Seven point two volt, uh, seven twenty five hundred milliamp per hour. It is charged by a micro, or not micro USB. This is a Type C USB connector. So you charge this through a Type C cable using a wall charger. Now, since this is a twenty, what is twenty five hundred milliamp per hour battery? Use a good 2 amp wall charger to charge this. Don't try to charge this big battery using your computer or it could take days, folks. <laughs> so don't try that. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, this also has brushless motors, folks. That's an important feature I forgot to mention. Um, that helps improve longevity of those motors in flight. Now, let's talk about the controller. Now, I mentioned this drone does not use Wi-Fi. Okay, there's no Wi-Fi connection. I don't like Wi-Fi flyers in general. They're normally a pain to get set up. But instead, this uses on-the-go cables like, to connect to your phone via the controller. Direct the control connects the controller to your phone through these on-the-go cables. And these on-the-go cables come in three type, three flavors. Um, we got Type C for um, Android phones. We also have, uh, well, that was uh, was that Type C? That's Type C. And oh, this one is Micro. Uh, USB for Android phones also and uh, we also have a connector for Apple phones so three types of phones connectors to connect your phone directly to this controller now the controller has an onboard relay amplifier so that means the video comes to this controller here gets amplified and gets sent to your phone through these on-the-go cables. Similarly, um, your commands that you send via the app to the drone go through the controller, get amplified, and get sent out of the opposite uh, antenna here. So one antenna is dedicated to control of the drone, and the other antenna is uh, dedicated to um, uh, the video feed from the drone being received on the controller. Uh, let's see, one of the things to talk about, this controller does have a built-in 2200 milliamp per hour uh, LiPo battery. That's supposed to give us two hours of uh, power, and you charge it through this Type-C USB port right here on the controller. Let's go over the buttons on the controller. Uh, it's a really basic controller. Uh, we have the scroll wheel for up and down movement on the lens for moving the camera up and down. This button here is for starting and stopping video. This button here is for taking a photo. Uh, this button here is for throttle and yaw, pitch and roll. By the way, you can change this from mode 1 to mode 2 using the app. Um, so this is both mode 1 and mode 2 controller. I'll talk about that too when I get into the app. Uh, this is your on-off switch. A quick press to start it. Wait, a quick press and then a long press. Actually, just a long press to start it up and turn it on. Let's turn it in the same in reverse to turn it off. This button here is for return to home to tell the, the drone to come in, return to home and land and you can also pause that return to home and land by doing a quick press on this button here and that will pause uh, the return to home. So that is the controller. Now let's talk about the app. This thing uses the Potensic Pro app available on Google Play and uh, on the Apple App Store and with that app you can view the video feed from the drone directly onto your phone. Additionally, you're able to monitor the flight parameters from the drone, such as distance and speed, altitude, things like that. Battery power, that's an important one <laughs> that you can monitor on your phone. Other things about it, this drone, the app has uh, geofence settings. If you wish to use geofence to prevent the drone from flying away too far or losing the drone, you can set a circle around your position. It's telling the drone, don't fly any further, so then say 200 meters and it will stay within that circle. Um, speed settings you can adjust uh, using the app. Now there's three different speed settings, video, normal, and sport. Uh, with those settings, um, when you're flying using electronic image sta stabilization and you're, you, know, you want to have the smoothest video, you want to be in video setting. Uh, normal and sport, um, they'll still, the electronic image stabilization will still work, but you may have some glitches there because of the drone being able to pitch around too much too quickly that the software won't be able to keep up to. Uh, it does have circle me settings, follow me, and waypoint settings in, in the app too. So 
that's cool. Um, the controller, you can, again, through the app, you can switch between mode one and mode two. Um, also, there's a setting for the controller settings for pairing the controller to the drone. Additionally, with calibration of the controller is available um, in the app also. Um, additionally, your battery info is available through the app, it's mainly temperature of the battery and charge levels of the battery. Additional gen general settings that are available in the app include ability to switch between units of Imperial and metric. Um, there's hardware decoding, which helps produce even smoother video, but only use that for uh, high-end phones like a good Apple, new, newer Apple phones <laughs> or newer Samsung phones. Um, the older phones like my phone <laughs> generally will not work. They'll kind of have glitches with hard, hardware decoding. So I recommend for those of you who have off-brand phones like me, um, well, actually mine's a Motorola. <laughs> it might work with hardware decoding. I don't know. I'm not going to try it though because usually that turns out to be glitchy with the phones I've tried in the past. Um, let's see, one of the things we talked about, hardware decoding, um, you can also, it also lists the hardware and software versions uh, and whether you need to update or not through the app. And finally, it does have advanced flight modes and that includes headless mode, um, locking, I'm not sure what locking is. It has ability to attitude uh, mode turn off, which means I think you can turn off um, headless mode not headless mode, altitude hold, and fly this without altitude hold. If that's true, I, want, I really want to demonstrate that out in the field. That would, could be a lot of fun with this particular drone, especially in sport mode if you can turn off altitude hold uh, for us, us older flyers who like to fly without altitude hold. <laughs> okay. And again, as I mentioned before, the app also provides uh, advanced flight modes of headless mode, uh, circle me, and waypoints, and hopefully I'll be able to also demonstrate those in the field. Let's go over what you get in the box. You get the instruction manual. You get the instruction manual for the app. And you get a quick start guide for the drone. Um, you got the drone itself. Uh, you get one or two batteries. I believe you get two. <laughs> but double check that before you purchase. You get a charging cable for the drone, drone's batteries, and for the controller. You get these on-the-go cables, depending which phone you want to use. You can use whichever of those cables. Um, you get a full set of spare propellers. You get a screwdriver and a bunch of little screws to help put those propellers, new propellers in. So that is the Potensic Atom SE. Let's take it out in the field, folks, and see how it flies. I'm excited. This has a lot of uh, things going for it on paper. I hope it actually works as advertised. Let's take it out in the field and see how it flies. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to Pleasant Ridge Park here in uh, between Girard, PA and Fairview, PA. Um, I have to apologize, folks. It's been a while since I did my last video. The weather has been really, really bad here in Erie, PA. This is the first break I've had to be able to come out here and fly, so that's why we're here. So let's get the Potensic SE in the air. First thing we need to do to turn it on is press this button quick and then a long press to turn on the drone itself and putting the drone on the pad and then turning on the controller by a quick press and a long press again until we hear a chirp and I think I should go in the opposite direction <laughs> I think this comes on first and then the, the drone so hold on folks while I do that turning this off and then turning this off so keep that in mind folks I think the controller comes on first and then the drone so controller on first Quick press and long press. That's on. And then the drone with a quick press and a long press. And we should be connected here shortly. Now, what I'm going to do, folks, is turn on uh, the screen recorder for my app here so that we can see the video from the drone. So hold on while I do that, folks. Okay, we are um, got it connected to the drone. Uh, first thing I want to do is check the settings in here in the upper right corner. Make sure that uh, speed settings are set to video because we're going to start off doing video first off. And the next thing we need to do is do the compass calibration. That's the second one done. And I'm going to hit start calibration. And it's two parts and we're going to hit OK. Please rotate the drone horizontally. We're going to do a horizontal rotation first. And the way I do this is I rotate my whole body. It makes for a better more stable rotation for me in particular and now we go vertical go around a few times until it says we're done
and calibration. Calibrated successfully. Okay, we're done. And putting it back on the pad and waiting a second just because I am dizzy. <laughs> okay, we're good there. I'm going to check the uh, controls. Battery power 99%. And the bottom, everything looks good there. And let me sh make sure that we're in beginner mode. Altitude limitations coming out of that. Next thing I want to check is the camera settings. Uh, we've got video set up right now. What's its settings? we got grid turned off. Watermark is turned off. Um, I'm just going to leave it. Actually, everything looks good the way it is. So, and we should be good to go. Okay, so for takeoff, I am going to start the video recording first by pressing this button here. And now it doesn't like my card. <laughs> I didn't have a problem with it before. Let me take it out and put it back in, folks, see if it helps. And putting it back in. Now, notice this. This is a V30 SD card. It should not be too slow. So let's put it back in. It says it's too slow. Let's see if it's still a problem with my V30 card. V30 card reinserted. SD card is inserted. Does it like it? See, it doesn't seem to have a problem now. So that's an issue I've seen with this particular drone. With a V30 card, it should not have a problem, but sometimes it does have a problem. I just uninsert it and reinsert it, and hopefully that corrects the problem. So let's see if we can start the video recording now. Okay, now it has no problem with my using that card. So starting the motors by bringing both sticks down and out. And let's take it to the air. Now, now it's a little bit windy today. Um, I forgot to check how many satellites, but we got 20 satellites. So this uses both uh, GPS, GLONASS, and the Chinese satellite system too. So here I am in the picture. Let me sync up the cameras. Say how do you like my jacket today, folks? It is a breezy day today. It's about eight mile, eight to ten miles per hour uh, breeze, but this, this still should be able to fly in that range. So let's take it up first, and then take a look at Lake Erie. See if we can see Lake Erie, and then fly out by and do a return to home. So hold on while I go up, sending it up, upward. Hey, while we're there, let me raise the gimbal up a bit too. Now notice the tilt. That tilt is normal, folks. The wind is coming from the left of the drone, and uh, the drone is going to tilt to crab into the wind. Okay, going up higher. What's the height? 17 meters, 18 meters. <laughs> I noticed they increased the font size. I had complained to the manufacturer that the font is too small. Okay, 30 meters, and they increased it. Now I can read it. <laughs> Before, it was a real tiny font. Okay, I'm going to keep my uh, antennas, sides of my antennas, pointed at the drone, and we're going to head over to the road. Okay, pushing forward. Again, notice the tilt. And the tilt is normal. Let me turn to the left a bit here. The tilt is normal, folks, and that's caused by the wind, and this does not have a, keep in mind, this does not have a, a multi-axis gimbal on it for stabilizing, you know, leveling that tilt. You're going to have to live with this if there's a wind. And I'm going to show you when we get over there. I'm going to turn the drone and show you, show you the effect here. I'm going to lower the gimbal, too, so I can look downward. I want to get close to the road. The tilt is increasing a bit because the wind's hitting it a bit more. Okay, we're close enough to the road, 140 meters out, and raising the gimbal back up again. And then I'm going to turn slowly to the left and point it toward myself here. And we're just going to let it sit there and bounce around in the wind and see how stable it is. So, turning it toward me. Slowly turning it. No, now it's tilting to the right. See, it's fighting that wind up there. Ooh, that's a big wind on it. Okay, <laughs> look how much it's tilting, folks. Okay, from that position, let's do a return to home. So, I am going to press the return to home button and hold it down and see, see if it comes back and how close it is to its landing position. Coming back. And here it returns. I don't know if you can see me on the ground there, folks. I'm going to lower the gimbal so you can. <laughs> Hello up there. 
and coming down. You know, I'm going to step back a bit so we can see it coming down too. And when it gets close to the ground, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let it land all the way. <clears throat> We're just going to see how close it looks to the pad, and I'm going to stop it there, and then we'll go into the advanced flight control features of the drone. And actually not too bad. Very good, actually. Stopping it right there. Very good. And raising up the gimbal again. Turning to the left. Getting in the picture. <laughs> Kibble's too high. Coming down a bit. See. Again, there we, there I am. There's that handsome guy. And syncing up the cameras one more time. There's about a quarter of a second lag, half second lag I'm seeing. Um, but that should be fine. Okay, next thing, let's try the advanced flight control features. Going back up again a bit. And stepping backwards. And we're going to see if we can do follow me first. Okay, in the left side there, that icon in the center. I'm going to click on that and hit follow me. If the flight altitude is less than five meters, okay, so we got to go higher to five meters. Right there. Okay, from that position there, let's try follow me again. I can read this now. Thank you, for Potensic, for updating your app. <laughs> so, follow me is activated. <clears throat> let's see if it actually follows me. It's right in the sun right now. I can't look at it. <laughs> is it turning toward my position? Yeah, it is. But is it following? It's, it's got a kind of delay there. How far away am I from it? Well, I don't know. I'd say about 20 meters. It still hasn't started following me yet. Let's walk off and see if it does follow me. <laughs> huh. No, that still has... Still is not following me, folks. <laughs> Let's see if I walk toward it, if it will walk away from me. Or when does it notice that I'm getting close to it? Right now it's just doing what's called spotlight mode. Where it stays in spot, or a place in the, in the air, and just stays there. Okay, so follow me. Needs a little work, unfortunately. I guess they'll work on that. I'm going to stop the follow me there. Exit current mission, yes, confirm. Next thing, let's try is circle position. And I'm going to hit circle flight. It's going to, and activate it. There it goes away from where it was. And from that point there, it's going to do a circle. And there it goes. Okay, going into the wind with an extreme tilt. And then it's going to level out as it comes to the, the wind is at its back. And then it's going to start tilting to the right. So now we know the wind's coming from that direction. <laughs> and it's going to start tilting to the right. Again, you know, this is inherent for the this type of drone with electronic in, image stabilization. If there's wind, there is going to be a tilt. You know, um, that can only be corrected with a, a multi-axis stabilized gimbal, which this does not have. It has electronic image, image stabilization, but not mechanical image stabilization to keep uh, the camera level the camera lens level. But even so, it still looks pretty pretty steady. I gotta admit that. But uh, we're almost done with that. Let's hit stop and confirm and bring it back over again. And the next mission is, let's try those waypoints. And I'm gonna hit the waypoint flight. And there's an area here. I'm gonna zoom in. Now, on this map, if you notice, in the lower right corner, it's kind of grayed out. We got to click that to activate. Okay, get it lit, and then we can select waypoints. One, two, two, and three, and then come back near me, and then we hit go, and then swipe to the right, and it should go on its waypoint flight. Okay, <laughs> it's not going. Maybe I need to do that again. Click and go. Switch. Still not going on its waypoint. Oh, there. Oh, there we go. It's activated now. Let's go back to this, to the view, so we can see what it's looking at. Going to waypoint one. <clears throat> Boy, it goes fast, don't it? This is a fast flyer, folks. 
And from that position there, it should be going to waypoint two, which would be the second field. It's going to come past me or near me. <laughs> That's a fast little drone. It's almost like an FPV racer. <laughs> I think you can do FPV racing with this, except with a GPS. Let me go up a bit higher, too. Give it a little throttle. Going to waypoint two. And that'll be right about there. Then turn to waypoint three, go up a bit higher. I'm going a bit higher. <laughs> going to waypoint three. Nice little drone, the way it moves. <laughs> yeah, it's a fast little drone, I gotta admit that. This could be fun. Especially it's an FPV drone. You know, I was thinking this could probably make a great F, little FPV um, surveillance drone if you got a farm or something that you want to just fly around your farm and check your cattle or whatever how things are this would do it <laughs> on the cheap okay coming back down without needing to buy one of those expensive DJI's this is actually pretty nice I've seen so far now keep in mind again you know the limitations of that um, gimbal on this or absence of a gimbal now okay we did those what else can we do here uh, I haven't tried altitude mode off. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to go up a little bit higher. Pressing that. Okay. Oh, it turns the GPS off. So you can fly manually. Okay. You still got altitude hold. But you got manual control now. And it, it goes with the wind. It, it drifts with the wind as you can see there. So let's turn that off. So that's what that does. Um, that would come in handy, folks, especially if you have a GPS malfunction where it starts flying to China, <laughs> back home to China. <laughs> turn it off. <clears throat> turn off the GPS. Take manual control. Uh, okay. So we did circle flight. Uh, let's try headless mode. Hitting headless mode. Man, headless mode should be activated. Let me push forward, see which way is forward. Okay, that's forward. Turning it this way. Lowering the gimbal. Okay, we can turn that screen off. Lowering the gimbal a little more because what I want to do is an up and away. And let's do it. Pulling up, pulling back on the stick. Uh, it only wants to go forward and head to mode. I'm pulling back on the stick, not, nothing happening. Pushing forward, it goes that way. So we'll do it, do it this way then. I think I turned off headless mode by closing that screen. <laughs> Either way, I can still do it up and away. Pushing forward. No, it's still in headless mode. So let's go back and turn headless mode off. Headless mode off. Because I just want to do an up and away. We'll do it this way. Turning, lowering the gimbal, coming down, seeing myself in the camera, syncing up the video. Make sure I'm recording and uh, recording both and pushing, pulling back and up. It's in headless mode again still. <laughs> pulling back. That's an up and away. Now let's bring it back home. A down and toward. <laughs> reduce the throttle, reduce the throttle, reduce the throttle. Got to turn to the left. Boy, that wind is hitting it. It is buffeting it. So the, the video is going to be a bit jerky. Keep in mind, we're in video speed. Okay. So that's that. Now, where did my wife and dog go? They're around here somewhere. I'm not seeing them. <laughs> okay. Next thing I wanted to try. Oh, I haven't done the pictures yet. Let me stop the video recording real quick. Turning the camera this way because I just want to take photos raise the gimbal up and take a photo that's one and one more okay now that took <laughs> one more and one more okay those are the photos that it can take Let's go. Now, the next thing uh, I want to do is uh, increase the speed. Okay. I'm going back into the settings. And, okay, that's camera settings. I want to go up to the drone settings, the upper right corner, and hit speed. 
and we're going to go to normal speed this time. Okay, we're in normal speed. Starting the video recording one more time. Okay, one more time. Okay, it's recording now. Syncing up the camera. And we're going to fly FPV with this little thing. Okay. It seems to be able to fly FPV. Let me go up a, a bit higher so I don't hit anything. But let's fly over to that pump house over there. God, this thing is fast. <laughs> this could make a, a little FPV racer. This is just normal speed, folks. Let's turn it to the right. Keep going forward. Going around the field. Flying FPV. Just using the screen, folks. And you can. This, this one... Uh, this very nice, clear picture on the screen. Coming toward me. I'm gonna fly overhead. Wow, okay, I think go. And gonna turn to the left. I'm gonna come down lower now. Coming down lower. Lowering, lowering, lowering. 11 meters. Gonna go around that way, coming down even lower. Look at this thing go! This thing could be a little FPV racer. And this is low speed. Let's go into sport mode. <laughs> okay, stopping it there right now. That's impressive. <laughs> okay, I accidentally lowered the gimbal here with my thumb or my middle finger. Since we're pitching forward, I'm going to raise the gimbal up high. Going back into the settings, let's go into sport mode. Sport mode. Please switch the sport mode at an altitude of 8 meters or more. Okay, so we got to be up higher. I can see that. I can understand that. Going to go up even higher. Sport mode is on. Okay. Still recording. And oh my god. I think pitches. I'm going to stop it there, right in the sun. Good Lord, look at that thing go! This could be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm having fun with it. I'm coming back down lower, though. Okay, let's stop it there. Okay, that's sport mode. That's burning up the batteries. i got to say that right now. And uh, going back to normal mode, or video mode, video. And we're going to finish that. Looking at the camera again. Coming back toward me. Okay, we got some video footage there, I'm pretty sure. Coming down lower. And raising up the gimbal again. And sinking it up here one more time. And then I'm going to stop the video recording and restart it. Restarting. Oh, there's my wife and dog. Let's go over and take a look at them. <laughs> I was going, where the heck did they go? Okay, I'm going to fly over toward them on a, using FPV, and then just follow them. Again, this would make a nice little surveillance drone. If you had a large area. Let's go check them out. <laughs> our new puppy. We, unfortunately, we lost our old puppy. She went across the Rainbow Bridge. But this is a new one from the... Humane Society. Say hello. <laughs> Let's follow them. Yeah, she's a this new one we got here. She's a little rambunctious thing. <laughs> she's uh, they said she's an American Eskimo mix. I don't know what that is. Uh, she looks like kind of like a husky to me, but <laughs> very energetic little dog or medium-sized dog. Okay, let's continue on. We'll go around the park again. I'm flying FPV, folks, with this thing. And yes, you can do it with this particular drone. I like that. A lot of these drones you get, the lag is so awful, especially the Wi-Fi flyers, that you can't do this. This one you can. It does it quite well, FPV flying with this. I'm impressed. Come down a little lower. Come down a little lower, three meters, two meters high altitude. 
coming back toward me. Flying FPV. Look at this thing come by. And that's at uh, video camera speed. So all in all, this <coughs> is a nice drone. Especially one of the few that has um, uh, under 250 grams that has, let me bring it down and we, let's discuss this. <laughs> You adjust my hat too, make sure my hat's on right. But coming down and getting into the sun so you see my face, but one of the few that has a built-in SD card reader under 250 grams. Um, that, those are hard to find, especially if it's not a DJI product. Uh, this one does have it. Um, they kept the weight off by not putting on that gimbal. That gimbal would, you know, a multi-axis gimbal would probably bump it above the 250 grams, but it's actually doing a very nice job is what I'm seeing here for this little thing. I kind of like it. This is going to be a keeper of mine because I especially like its ability to be able to fly FPV and how fast it can fly. <laughs> That's a blast. That's a fun drone. Okay, let's go back up one more time, take a look at Lake Erie, raising a gimbal and climb it up. See if we can see Lake, Lake Erie. Oh, I, I lowered the gimbal again with my, my ring finger hit at that time. Raising it up and let's go back up again. You gotta go up to about 30, 40, meter, 40 meters to see Lake Erie. And that wind is picking up and it's starting to tilt it. There's a big wind up there, but Lake Erie's off in that direction there, 40 meters up. Okay, that's about it. So, okay, how's our battery power? I'm looking here. Um, hmm. I'm looking for the battery power. Where is that thing? Well, let's come back down because I'm not comfortable over here. I'm not seeing what the battery power is on my screen here. But going back out, going out and re reducing throttle to come back down again. Where'd my wife and dog go? They're over here somewhere. Or in the gimbal. Ooh, that wind is picking up. Coming back. Where am I? There I am. Coming back, that wind is picking up big time up there. Coming down, coming down. I shouldn't, shouldn't be flying that high with, the, with that my, amount of wind. Coming back over. Yeah, it's bouncy from that wind. <laughs> and there we go. So, so, all in all, not bad. Now, where's that battery power on this? I'm looking on the screen here. Uh, remaining battery power, it's got to be there somewhere. Oh, oh yeah, 23%. So, we're low. <laughs> we're getting low. It's that little circle in the upper right corner that's green. We're still good, but we're, we're at 23%. Soon we'll be at 20, and I got a feeling that's when we're going to need to worry about um, geofencing or automatic return to home. But in the meantime, let's fly over to my wife again. Find her. There they are. We're over at the uh, jungle gyms here that they just built for the kids. Pretty nice what they built here. But I want to be high when I go over there. And there they are. And there they be. I hope my dog doesn't do her business there. I don't think my wife's thinking about that. <laughs> I don't think my wife's thinking about that. Oh, well. I hope she's prepared in case she does. Because <laughs> that dog's still a puppy. And still not fully trained. <laughs> so, coming back. Yeah, that wind is picking up, yeah, but it can fly in it. I'm guessing the wind now is about 12 mile per hour, 10 to 12. So for those of you who fly in windy areas, you know, I, one of my viewers says he, he's in Dakotas, lots of wind. Yeah, this, this will fly in the wind, as you can see. <laughs> A lot of wind. Now, notice how stable it's staying in terms of altitude. Okay, that's that uh, ultra, or not ultrasonic, uh, time of flight sensors on the bottom of the belly there looking down there helping to hold it extremely steady especially when you're close to the ground so that's another neat feature that this has that I kind of like okay let's get away from the landing pad because the reason being I want to see what it does on low battery okay well oh, it's starting to flash already I'm seeing that flashing flashing green I don't know if that means it's recording or not let me stop the video recording and see if that's no it's still flashing so I'm guessing that means we're low battery <laughs> It's telling us we're low battery when that's flashing like that. So, final thoughts. Let me get those in while we're here. Um, 
meat drone. I hope the price of this is right. I haven't checked the price. Sorry, folks. If the price is right, this is a good one. Um, there we go. Low battery. Return to home. Please fly carefully. I want to see what it does on low battery. So we're going to keep on flying until um, it either lands or does it return to home. I'm just curious. What does it do? So, um, but again, nice drone. Under 250 grams. Good camera. 4K camera. Um, very stable, even in the wind when you're close to the ground. Uh, but still, the tilt, the disadvantage is, is, you know, even with the image stabilization, if you've got a lot of wind, you're going to get somewhat of a tilty image. You know, you can't avoid that without having three or two, at least two axis stabilization on the drone. So, okay. Again, we're going to see how many minutes of flight time we get with this. Um, <laughs> Is it going to do a return to home or is it going to land? Okay, we're down to 12%. I'm guessing at 10%, it's probably going to do a return to home. Um, 12%. Another minute or two. <laughs> so we're just going to hover. So all in all, nice drone. Um, I like the setup. I like it doesn't have Wi-Fi. If I really don't like Wi-Fi flyers, folks. They are a pain in the butt. <laughs> Those of you that have Wi-Fi flyers, you know that. I like on-the-go cable connections makes for less lag, easier connection, less monkeying around to get the dang drone in the air. Okay, so, okay, are we under 10% yet? We're hitting 10% right now. Is it going to land or is it going to drop from the sky? That is, oh, there we go. Now we know. <laughs> it goes home. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. So, yes, it does a return to home. So with that in mind, I'm going to stop the video recording. Uh, right about now as it's coming down. Video recording stop. Let's see how close this landing is. Well, we're about two meters off. Ain't too bad. Not too, not too great, but not too bad. <laughs> close enough for government work, as my dad used to say. <laughs> so, all in all, the Potensic Atom SE. I like it. Nice drone. Good job, Potensic. This is Quadcopter 101. Hope you enjoyed this flight. Quadcopter 101. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.